Kamusta po ang bawat isa, my brothers and sisters? Yes. Amen. How is our walk in faith with our Lord? So for those who did not, who were not here in the morning, we were empowered by the Lord through His words that the true winners in the Lord, the true victorious ones, are the overcomer. No matter what, despite, in spite, we will continue in the Lord. Hallelujah. So tonight, we have heard that no one is a newcomer. So may the message of the Lord tonight be an encouragement that all of us will stand no matter what happened and we will remain faith as the very gift of the Lord to us which He entrusted to us. So, my brothers and sisters, we will be um, studying and we will be reviewing about the book of Proverbs. We know that the, the Proverbs is full of wisdom coming from the Lord, from the very writer Solomon, King Solomon, from his father given to his son, and now it is being revealed to us because the Lord knows that we will make it up to the end, up to the day that He is completing His heart towards us, my brothers and sisters, until we finish the race with the wisdom. So, what is wisdom, by the way, my brothers and sisters? We're always reminded in Proverbs 4, 5, in whatever cause, get wisdom. As it is written here, get wisdom, get understanding, do not forget my words or swerve from them. Brothers and sisters, get wisdom, get understanding. We get understanding from reading the word of God, hearing the gospel, listening to preachings. We get knowledge from the very word of God, which are very powerful. But to use it in the actual life, in the actual situations that we have in our life, choosing which is of the Lord and which is of the evil one, Choosing which is godly versus the evil one, that is wisdom. And the Lord is giving us so much wisdom from His very words, from the power of His words. And where does this wisdom come from? It all begins from fearing the Lord, as it is written in Proverbs 9 10. Fear the Lord. My brothers and sisters, the fearing of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. With the very relevance that we have to the Holy Lord, that we take as the master of our life, the very Lord that we take as the master, the Lord, and we revere Him as He is our God, then we accept whatever He is giving us through His words. He speaks to us, to us through His words. And with that fear, not the fear that is of this world, but the holy fear, meaning in your full reverence and respect to the God who is aiming for you goodness in your life, the, the very God who knows what will be your destination if you obey Him faithfully, you fear Him. So you receive His teaching. We receive the rebuke of the Lord, the discipline of the Lord from His very words, and that is wisdom. And the Lord is giving us so much wisdom because the truth is, if there is wisdom of the Lord, there is also wisdom of this world. And we know, brothers and sisters, the evil one is true, and the evil one is so cunning. If we are giving intelligence by the Lord and the wisdom by the Lord, He is also very cunning and very powerful in deceiving each and every one of us. Considering sometimes those who are already long time in the ministry, they are not excused. Much more those who are just starting in the faith. It doesn't tell that if you are long time serving the Lord may be, but if the wisdom of the Lord is not truly planted in your heart, then there is a tendency that you may fall away from the faith that the Lord once have given you as gift. Amen. That's why the very prayer of the Lord that no one of us individually will fall away. Everyone has tasted the goodness of the Lord. Amen. And that's the very thing that we keep on holding into our faith and holding up to the end to serve the Lord. But 
First Peter 5 8, as we always say, that the devil is so cunning that he is like a roaring lion. See? That is a roaring lion seeking someone to devour whoever you are. So, the message of the Lord is always to be alert, be sober minded, be active. Amen. Because the devil is true and the devil is truly making his way, his very best to destroy us and to let us be distracted in our faith as we continue in the Lord. And it's very easy to determine which of is the Lord and which is not of the Lord. We know that everything that belongs to the Lord is holy, perfect, true. And the Lord is all but giving truth. And the opposite of it, and submission, rebellion, everything that is counterfeit or opposite of holiness, of truth, is belonging to the evil one. That's why we are being given every day the word of God. That's why we are being um, encouraged every time to have this personal devotion, sincerely, individual. And we have also gatherings as believers of God in Bible study. But the most important is soaking in the holy presence of God with His words and in our prayer. Because very true that the evil one is very cunning. And the message tonight of the Lord is being given to us in the book of Proverbs chapter 6. We need to understand the schemes of the devil. And the Lord is giving us wisdom. Who is the evil one? Maybe he looks very beautifully in our eyes. Very encouraging in our sight. Amen. Because this evil one is masquerading. Putting his mask to be encouraging, to be attractive, but beware. So in the book of Proverbs chapter 6, <coughs> Verses uh, 12, Papa Papo. You will know. I'm not sure what I'm going to ask you. That's what I said in NIV. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 12. Sabi nito, A troublemaker and a villain who goes about with corrupt mouth. Amen. So who are the corrupt people? Those who are speaking about the wicked things. And, and and things that is not pleasant. We know that in Colossians 4, 6, we are only encouraged as children of God, as imitators of Jesus Christ. It should be seen in our speech. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. You know how to answer everyone if you have the very word of God in your heart. You cannot contest what is about the Lord and you cannot protect the word of the Lord if in your heart you don't have it. Amen. And you always speak of the word, the grace and you speak of the truth about the word of God. And these are the manifestations, the goodness of the word of God. If it is already in our hearts, no one will be deceived because just like sickness, it has symptoms. And the evil one the, the works of the enemy has all its manifestation. And if we are wise enough, being full of wisdom from the Lord, we can easily identify. You cannot easily be drawn away and be convinced even though it is masquerading in, in beauty. In, as we continue, who winks maliciously with his eyes, sickness with his feet, and motions with his fingers. Who plots evil with the sin in his heart, he always stir up conflict. We know it in our surrounding. In whatever world you are in, office war, in your family, you know that the devil is working, but there is somebody who is always very eager, very excited that there is conflict and chaos, chismes that is scattering around. Therefore, disaster will overtake him in an instant. He will surely be destroyed without a remedy. That's the warning of the Lord. If we take part or if we initiate to these actions, manifestations of the evil works, my brothers and sisters, we cannot mock God. There is a judgment that awaits that person. So let us not be deceived. 
let us not be part and let us not initiate. So our main verse today is in Proverbs 6, 16 to 19. Be wise enough to be very vigilant in your surrounding. Or if not in your surrounding, you have the control of your very own self. Sometimes we cannot control others. It's their life. They have their own will. But you, you have your own will. You have your own mind. You have your own heart to guard. So see to it that you are not partaking to this. There are six things the Lord hates. Seven that are detestable to Him. First, haughty eyes. When we say haughty, there is pride in Him. We know that a person has pride when he doesn't take rebuke. And rebuke we know is part of teaching of the Lord. The word of the Lord that is being given to us through preachers, through our spiritual mentors, through Bible study leaders, are correcting, rebuking, training, and teaching us so that we will be righteous. But if your heart is too proud that you do not want to accept rebuke, and you are always insisting your own, even though it's very obvious that it is being given by the Lord, please be very careful. This is detestable to God. First, Holy eyes. Second, a lying tongue. We know ourselves if we are lying, and we can say it from our very own self. We know ourselves. And the lying tongue is very deceitful. If we are to look in James 8.44, it is the very nature of the evil one. Very easy to tell. John 10.10, 10, everything that is destructive, everything that is leading to destruction, killing, and losing hope, losing in the faith. So John Fenton said, the thief, referring to the evil one, the cunning one, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, while Jesus came that they may have life, that we may have life, not just simple life, but the life in abundance and life to the full. That is the ability of the Lord. But the opposite of it, whatever is contrary, belongs to the evil one. John 8, 44, it says here, <clears throat> You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire, or father's scheme. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth. So whatever is truth, what is truth? Your word, Lord, is truth, John 17, 17. Whatever is opposite, my brothers and sisters, belong to the common one, because his, when he lies, he speaks his native tongue, for he is a liar and the father of lies. And what is the, the hint here, my brothers and sisters? Sometimes the person captivated with the lying spirit, because it's the spirit that's working in the person. Hallelujah. If the person is no longer aware, that, that, that's prayer that we are praying to each and every one, that we will not be deceived by this lying spirit. That we are already lying from our heart, but we are not aware of it. May kalalagyan, my brothers and sisters. It says here in our Proverbs of our reading, A lying tongue is detestable to God. Amen? He hates it. Lying tongue, because the tongue is so cunning, and he, the devil loves to use our tongue. What can it do? What kind of destruction and the danger that this tongue can bring us? Let's go back to James 3.5. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, amen? But it makes great boast. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. With the simple chisimates passing on the messages which is not of truth, and you know, riding on to stories that you don't know the origin, something like this that starts from your mouth, from your very arm, that is so deceiving and that is so dangerous, my brothers and sisters. You have your own tongue, so you have the control of your tongue. Amen. We only should be speaking of the word, speaking of the grace of God, and speaking of truth alone. So, 
what else are detestable to God? Hands that shed innocent blood. Innocent blood meaning those yung, yung nagdadamay ba? We know ourselves and sometimes we are being caught to this. Proverbs 1.10, what does it say? My son, if sinners entice you, do not give in to them. And if you give in, my brothers and sisters, that's your problem. Sometimes you're already very busy with your ministry. Sometimes you're already busy with your Bible studies. But we are being enticed and easily give in to sinners encouraging you na makisama in the rebellious spirit to, to the grouping maybe that destroys the reputation of the person, that destroys the group and creating chaos in the community, maybe creating chaos in other group when there is grouping and you are being enticed and you easily given, beware my brothers and sisters. It is detestable to God. Amen. Let's continue. A heart that devises wicked schemes. Let me remind you, my brothers and sisters, sometimes you're already this one, that you are not aware. That's the problem. It means that you are captivated by the evil one. It starts from the heart. We always hear it, that we need to guard our heart because everything flows from it. So be very careful with your emotion. Where should your emotion emote only? It should only emote to the will of God. What do you mean? Your heart should be hunger only to doing the will of God as Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ. What is the will of the Lord, of the Father? It's that same thing that you should be busy about, my brothers and sisters. John 4, 34, what's the will of the Father? It is being practiced by Jesus, we should practice. What is our food? My food is to the will of the Father. What's the will of the Father? There are a lot of works being accounted to us by the Lord and trusted to us as assignment by the Lord, as co-work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And finish it up to completion. Finish it in, accomplish it in, up to the end. Amen? But if we will be, maybe, if we will be deceived by your heart, from your heart, my brothers and sisters, it is your um, it is your it is your loss my brothers and sisters so always guard your hearts let's continue what is the testimony to, to God feet that are quick to rush to even we know this and we can see it you tumutuwa ka excited ka when everything is in chaos everything is not peaceful and the brothers and sisters even though already in the ministry of God, flocks already of God being scattered because of malicious talks. Amen. So be very careful. False witness even who pours out lies. This belongs to even one. The manifestation is very clear. The manifestation is very visible. We can feel it. We can see it. So guard our hearts. And a person who stirs up conflict in the community in the group, even in the ministry where the children of God is. So the message tonight of the Lord, my brothers and sisters, be very watchful, be on our God. This, the ones that are enumerated tonight in Proverbs 6, it is easy to remember. It starts from eyes that is so deceiving because it becomes proud sometimes if we are not aware. Proud meaning you are no longer being submitting, not, not submissive to the will of God in your life to His words. You tend to rebel. You tend to be arrogant and prideful. It starts from the eyes, then it goes to your tongue, which is very cunning. Down to your hands, and then down even to your feet, even to your heart, my brothers and sisters. The whole of you, the total of you, is being captivated if you are not aware. I am aware. Full of, I am full of the word of God. I am aware. But how come that you are still being deceived, my brothers and sisters? In the morning, the first preaching we heard that there should be maturity in each and every one of us. How to know how to get maturity? It is between you 
foot in the door. That's why it's not, it doesn't necessarily mean, my brothers and sisters, if you are so busy in the ministry, that you will not be deceived. Everyone is standing to be deceived. So always be on guard, always be watchful. And um, 